What's up, adventuresses? In today's episode, I'm going to be sharing with you why Columbia needs to be on your bucket list as a horse rider and an equestrian adventuress. Welcome to the channel dedicated to helping you travel the world on horseback. My name is Crystal Kelly and I am your host. I've actually traveled to over 60 countries in the world. 20 of them I've worked with horses professionally and Colombia is has been on my list for a very long time. So in this episode, I'm gonna be sharing with you how you can ride horses in Colombia, what to see, top travel tips, and of course, where you can book your next riding expedition. Now for a deeper, more fully loaded guidebook with some information and top tips, I would definitely recommend that you go to amazon.com and you get a copy of the World Travel Guide for Equestrians book. I absolutely love to have this book on my coffee table. I think it makes a great gift also to friends and family members. However, I'm also going to, as a gift to you for hitting the subscribe button and the like button, I am going to give you a free copy, a digital ebook of this book. All you have to do is check out the link in the show notes and in the description, and I will send you a digital ebook completely free as a thank you. Now we update the information in this travel guide book every year. So please make sure that you've downloaded the recent edition. You can also find it on our website, equestrianadventuresses.com. If you do book a stables or go on a tour or an expedition with horses because of this video, then please, I would love it if you could actually share your photos and your videos and your feedback with us in our Facebook group, Equestrian Adventuresses. It's a fun place where we kind of exchange information and ideas and share our trip and adventures together. So without any further delay, let's get into it. Now, I just want to give a quick disclaimer. When you are traveling around the world on horses, I'm sure you've probably heard some horror stories that the horses aren't as, you know, treated as well as they are in some other countries. So what I want to say is, you know, full disclaimer, please do your research, you know, make sure that you check out their website, you go on our Facebook group, you talk with other people who've actually been there, so they've seen the horses, and they know that the welfare of the horses are priority. I will say in our travel guide books, we do have a verification badge. It's basically a little blue badge. And what that means is that I have personally visited the stables with my own eyes so I can verify that the horses are happy and healthy. So if you are looking for stables with that blue verification badge, definitely you know that it's safe to go there. However, if they don't have the badge, it doesn't really mean that they're, you know, not having happy, healthy horses. It just means that I haven't visited it yet. And there's a whole lot of stables and a whole lot of countries out there. So, you know, it's just physically impossible for me to see all of them. But I've done my best to kind of collect all the information for you in this book. And of course, you know, that we actually know of personally, that, you know, these are women in our group or what have you. The soaring tropical mountains, the pristine Caribbean waters, the Amazon jungle and old ruins mixed with historical colonial cities is enough to make you feel like you've stepped into an Indiana Jones movie. Colombia is far from anything you've ever experienced before and a place well worth exploring. On horseback. Fresh fruits, a rich culture, and exotic biodiversity makes this destination a true adventure. And the best part about Colombia is it's extremely underrated, which means it's not super touristy and it's very easy to get off the beaten track and to feel like basically you're the only one there. I think collectively as horse riders, you know, we love nature, we love pristine places, we love going to places that feel untouched by man, and Colombia is definitely one of those places. I know I get really annoyed like when I visit to mainstream places like, you know, the Eiffel Tower or the Taj Mahal, and it's just so crowded with so many people and so many tourists, and you know, everyone's trying to take selfies and kind of blocking the view. And I know I always get really overwhelmed and frustrated when I'm in places like that. And I feel like in Colombia, if you are like me and you don't want to be in the crowds, this is where you need to go. In Colombia, Spanish is commonly spoken, so learning a few basic words in Spanish might come in handy. There are definitely a lot of sites and things to do while visiting Colombia, so sightseeing the various colonial cities is worth adding to your list, especially if you want to dive deep into the rich culture, arts, and even dancing. One of the things that you should do is visit the Lost City, which is an archaeological site called Korokoro Valley, also historical Bogota and the Tatakawa Desert. You can walk down old Cartagena, go partying in Medellina, and experience life in the pueblos in rural places. Colombia is super diverse. They have beaches, they have mountains, they have rainforests. And if you love tropical birds and, you know, jungle wildlife, then definitely Colombia is for you. Now in Colombia, there's something known as the coffee trail. And this is definitely a highlight 
This trail is along a certain region in Colombia, which is famous for producing coffee. So of course, if you are a coffee lover, then, you know, you're going to love riding horses on the Colombian trail, on the Colombian coffee trail. You're gonna have fresh Colombian coffee and you're gonna be able to get some delicious coffee to take back home to your jealous family members. So at this point, you might be wondering where can I actually ride in Colombia? What I would suggest is you contact La Juana Colombia. If you ride with La Juana Colombia, you're gonna experience the beautiful tropical Andes of Colombia with La Juana mules. And it's funny because mules are considered to be the four by fours of Colombia. So if you wanna travel in steep mountains and terrain, like, you know, you will be, then you're gonna want a mule. And it's funny because I've met a lot of people that, you know, I've asked them like, oh, would you ride a mule? And a lot of them, the first thing that they would say is like, no, they're stubborn or, you know, something kind of stereotypical like that. And I've actually, I've spoken with a woman. It's actually on our podcast, our very first podcast episode. And if you listen to her story, she actually had the privilege of riding a mule. And she said that it was like the best experience of her life, that she was mind blown at how well trained the mule was, how intelligent it was, and how super sure-footed in the steep, rocky terrain. It was basically like a mountain goat. So she said after that trip, you know, she was addicted to mules and she almost preferred to ride mules over horses in the kind of terrain that you'll find in Colombia. So if you haven't ridden a mule, this is definitely a once in a lifetime opportunity to actually experience mules in their prime in the and in the tropical rainforest and in the mountains. Now, the coffee region is actually declared by UNESCO as a World Heritage Site, so it is well worth the visit. And of course, Colombia is a very Christian nation, so you definitely need to visit some of the churches, maybe even go on a little pilgrimage. And one of the famous churches that is definitely worth a little pilgrimage is Las Lajas. This church is frequently voted as the world's most beautiful church in the world. It's built in a canyon, and it has an impressively high bridge. I think the best thing about traveling to Colombia, especially with La Juana Colombia, is you can visit all year round. So it doesn't matter when you want to book your trip. I mean, you really, you have no excuse. You're going to be riding in mountains and forests and in meadows. Now, the weather can be quite varied. It could be a little bit humid, so it can be hot at times. Sometimes it can rain. It's going to be sunshiny. So you're going to want to pack like a little light jacket, a little rain jacket, but then also some light cotton breathable breathable shirts as well. You're gonna be spending about five or more hours in the saddle each and every day, and you are gonna be riding Western on these mules. Now, because you're gonna be in a lot of steep terrains, you know, an intermediate riding ability is totally fine. Uh, you are gonna be doing quite a lot of walking, obviously, because it's so steep. Um, however, non-riders are also welcome to join and they can go and sightsee in the day while you're out having your fun you know, horseback adventure. I'm sure the number one thing that you're probably thinking right now is you've seen like one too many movies where Colombia, you know, you just think of like drug lords or something. And so you're kind of like, well, is it actually safe to travel in Colombia? And my best advice would be if you are unsure or, you know, this is the first time that you're going to be traveling solo as a woman, what I would suggest is for you to actually look up our Equestrian Adventuresses Masterclass. This is a complete video course. It's like seven hours long. It has uh, three different modules and women's travel safety is a huge part of that. That's its own module. So you can definitely develop your confidence and your skills there to be able to travel in any country. Doesn't matter. And then, of course, the first module, the most popular one is how to have a sticky butt, you know, how to be able to ride any horse in any terrain confidently because because, you know, we don't want you falling off and having to go to the hospital while you're visiting Colombia. You know, we want that you're a strong rider and that you have the confidence, you know, in the different terrains and on different horses. Again, no matter which country you're traveling or what terrain. So I'm going to include a link in the description for the Equestrian Adventuresses Masterclass. Feel free to check it out. You can also find it on our website at equestrianadventuresses.com. That's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and happy trails!